All right, so if we've if we've created our own um, Python object and we're comfortable with kind of manipulating it at the grasshopper level, let's actually start to write some scripts inside of the object um, that here in our first exercise are actually, is actually going to create a grid of points. And to do that, we need to talk a little bit more about counters and looping, right? So here's a grid of points, right, in the x and y direction. Um, and that's what we're going to produce. And if that's the objective, um, the first thing we want to do is not actually start typing any kind of code, but we want to um, develop some pseudocode, right? It's not actually code, it's pseudocode. And this is just the plain language description of the goals we want to achieve and how we think we might uh, go about doing that, so goals and process. You can also think of this as a kind of a uh, basic outline for what we're going to try to produce, right? And uh, we can leave this pseudocode inside of our script um, by keeping, uh, by commenting it from, uh, from the script. That means that we can, um, as humans, uh, share these scripts and we can share human language between each other using the pound sign as a way to uh, denote a comment that the computer will ignore when actually running the script. So in Python, we have to use the pound sign uh, to do so. All right, so here's an example of uh, some commented uh, pseudocode. And this is actually the uh, pseudocode for the first exercise. We're going to import the Rhino script library first. And that's a way for us to um, use some more user-friendly methods from Rhino script as opposed to Rhino common. Again, we'll talk about the difference between them, uh, between those two uh, syntax, um, two different syntaxes uh, in a little bit. But for now, let's just note that we're going to use the Rhino script syntax. The next thing we're going to do is make sure that what comes out, because we're trying to create a grid of points, will be understood as a list. And then we're going to go ahead and create the array of points in the x and y directions by first creating a loop to define x and then creating a second loop internal to that that will define y. Uh, so we'll be creating points in the x and y direction and we're going to be using um, counters i and j uh, to create the point and then lastly supply the point to the output by appending it to um, what is noted as letter A. All right, so um, again, before we dive into programming, let's talk a little bit more about um, how we're going to approach scripting with Python inside of Grasshopper. Now, Python itself does not store data with an assigned type. It's all abstract, or you could also say it's generic. So, um, and that's also a little bit unique to a lot of uh, programming language, languages where you actually have to specify not only uh, what you want to store, but what type of data it is, All right? Um, so we have to be aware of the different types of data that, are, um, that we're working with and what and how it's going to be used effectively inside of the Grasshopper Python script editor, right? So as a refresher, some different types of data that we might be working with today. Integers, whole numbers, right? Um, under the category of objects, we might be working with points and surfaces, right? And there may be some other things that uh, you might encounter in the near future, such as strings, right? These are just characters. And Booleans, right? True or false. Right? So when we're actually using our Python uh, Grasshopper Python object in Grasshopper, um, we have to kind of uh, deal with the fact that Python doesn't care what type of data it is, but Grasshopper definitely does. And Grasshopper stores all data in special classes, right? So um, if, you, if you've if you used the Grasshopper for a little bit, um, you might see that um, under params, there are all these different types of geometry and all these different types of primitives. And a lot of times you might get errors because the types don't match. So Grasshopper, unlike Python, 
has, it has to know what type of data you're working with. Um, so as we're developing our Python component in Grasshopper, we have to define the types explicitly as we supply data to that object. So we have to supply a type hint. So with every input that we create for the Python component, we have to right-click it and specify a type hint. And here again, you can see many of those uh, types that we were just looking at, integers, strings, points, surfaces, etc. Right. So we're going to specify the type hint every time. Okay. And then in order to actually create multiple points, right, we have a simple process, create point. But we want to do that multiple times. So we're going to use what is commonly referred to as a loop or looping to repeat a process incrementally until we reach the desired goal. Let's say make seven points in the x direction and four points in the y direction. Those are our goals, seven and four. Right? And in order to construct our loop, we have to use counters, right? Convention suggests that the variable letters we use for our counters start with I, then go to J, K, M, N, P, etc. Um, so let's go ahead and start to first look at how we're actually going to construct a loop. And we're, there are many different types of loops. We're going to focus on a for loop for today. And um, here's a kind of mix between pseudocode and syntax, right? Whenever we're using a for loop, we want to um, create our counter for i. There's our counter. It's going to be in range between 0 and 3. So it's going to count 0, 1, 2. Create an inside. Each time it counts, it's going to do the actions that are indented below it. So first, if i starts at 0, which is denoted here, we're going to create a point at coordinate 0, 0, 0. We finish the loop. We go back up. It says for i in range, um, now it's going to be 1. Create a point at coordinate 1, 0, 0, etc. In the end, if we type range 0 to 3, we're going to create three points. All right? It's going to skip the last number. It goes up to 3, but not including 3. Okay, and um, again, to uh, create our grid of points, we'll be working with point objects. Those are just um, a simple type of geometry that are defined by an ordered set of numbers that we'll call coordinates. Typically, this is Cartesian in nature. Uh, we frequently talk about points as x, y, z, in this case, 5, 7, 6 in world space. And that's going to allow us to, if we set up two loops, and um, define the action, create point. It's going to allow us to create a grid of points and maybe even an array of points that is in three dimensions.